those words again, I think in order to make it porno, the word is porno, mm -hmm. you have to come out and say, henceforth, we absolutely reject discard any express authority which you have over our people. You have to come out and say, okay, do not okay that's a very good suggestion. Right. We'll, we'll include it in the next version that we put out. Mahalo. Yeah. Okay, so okay, okay. Uh, Some somebody else has a question. Some other people have a question. I'm going to mic Thank you. By the way, Leon, um, Leon, you know uh, the papers that were submitted in the court recently for my eviction from Robello Lane. Right. Um, you folks, con you folks conferred about that, yeah? Those those papers. People said that you folks had met to look over the papers that were submitted to the system. Okay. Once once yeah. again, um, Don, there's just more than one way to skin that cat, yeah. And so whatever uh, Kilikina Kekumano. Uh, did for me was to uh, have me acknowledged as not being a securitized corpus delecti uh, under their system, that I am a living soul. As um, Philippe would say, Genesis 2 7 says, I'm not a man, not a woman, not anything that would uh, clarify me under the U.S. system as being part of their corporation. I am. Uh, requesting a declaratory judgment be made that I am a living soul. So because that was submitted into their system, this is another way of, of what we're doing to encourage them to be caught off guard, the system. So, but I went in not knowing any better that <laughs> the judge wanted to throw me in jail. Uh, I didn't know any better. And so I was truly a keiki when I went in there, not knowing any better. So now to wait and see, because it's still pending in the system. They have to make a judgment on that. It's in their system. So when that day comes, whenever it may come, guess what? I don't know any better. I'm being pulled into it, but it's another way of skinning the cat. Uh, so that's that's what needs to be made aware, is that whatever way Kilikina assisted me in getting me into the system by way of declaring from the perspective of the Kanaka that we are not theirs, now to wait patiently and see what really happens to me. Yeah. This word system has to be the most evil yeah. and the most as the most evil as the most disingenuous <laughs> inhumane way. of denying us of the right to be who we are. And what's that? Independent. That we are independent. We've been, we were born independent. And we dare you to deny us of this birthright. Doing it more often. Period. Yeah. Can you go over there? No, can you go over there? I have a question. Aloha uh, mai, Dexter K.L. Moku Kayama. Um, I, I, I didn't want to give a speech because I think you guys already know the answers to all these questions already. Um, um, but we also understand, and from my perspective, 
um, Andy, um, we understand that many of us will have to make sacrifices as we continue down this path. And um, one of the things I just might want to comment is that um, I think we need to be prepared for another long haul. Um, and and in the and during the long haul, that there will be sacrifices. Andy, I, I respect what you're doing because I do represent clients in making the argument that they have no jurisdiction. But I also tell my clients, unfortunately, for now, as long as the judges and the attorneys and the banks are failing to comply with international law and the, and the laws of the Hawaiian Kingdom, the result is that some of you will lose your property. I said, that doesn't mean you don't fight it, because, but you continue to fight it. But I don't have a mortgage. Okay. I'm not in a mortgage system. Yeah, well, but what I mean is in any system, as long as we're playing in their system, I, I think you have... We have that right to say they don't have authority. Right. And I think you have every right to tell them they don't have authority. But at the same time, one of the things we just have to realize is that for yeah. now, they're failing to recognize the true law. Yeah. And because they fail to recognize the true law, some of us will be dispossessed of our property. But the thing about it is you want it on, you know, on paper. That's but it. You want that. That's it. That's then you can appeal it. That's it precisely. So the fact that, and this is, I can just tell you from my perspective, this is how I do it with my clients. I let them know that because we're playing in this system, the result is for now, they're going to ignore our argument, even though they have no basis. They can provide us no proof whatsoever, as, as Professor Chang said, to show that they have lawful, ter uh, lawful jurisdiction over this territory, or that they have the sovereignty, or they lawfully acquired the sovereignty. So I will provide all the evidence to show that the Hawaiian Kingdom continues to exist. I will provide all the evidence that, that proves that they never lawfully acquired Hawaii. And despite that, of course, the judges, the attorneys one, will provide no evidence to the contrary. Okay, so they basically will allow me to make the argument and provide me no opposition. And the judges will provide no opposition. But even after all... I'm not sure I know what you just said, Uncle. Can you say that again? I don't think I can say it, but I've said it. And, uh, the impression I got is you gave their system and you still continue to give their system the right to deprive us of our rights. Okay. Um, okay, now I understand what you said. And, and you are correct in that we have this dilemma, this dilemma of having to deal with them in their system. I'm calling it a dilemma. It's not a dilemma. You keep calling it a dilemma, you say, well, you know, we're not doing it right. No, no, it's that's not what I'm saying. I am not ever going to admit when that we're not doing it. this dilemma, do you make a plus on our side, or do you make a minus? When I say dilemma, Uncle, what I mean by dilemma, is that for now they are dragging anti into their court they you're, are dragging you're are giving them the finite definition of what you mean when you say this dilemma we don't want them to have this picture of this dilemma this dilemma is simply illegal okay uh, and, and but that's the argument we make understand this. You, all of you, have been socialized, you learned the methodology of the system. I want to this mic. Um, you know, you guys understand the system, you went bought into it. You went to the university, you learned their language. And you think that by learning their language, you're going to prevail. Well, you have prevailed. You are a colonized Hawaiian. Get it straight. You're a colonized Hawaiian. No matter how you try to say, I fight for the Hawaiian people. I, I, I Hang don't, on a minute. I, I'm okay, not done. Okay. All right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So even if you're a colonized Hawaiian, you have a right to. If you want to be a smart Hawaiian, you have a right to. If you want to be a dumb Hawaiian, you have a right to. You as a Hawaiian have a right to be anything you want. Okay? But let me say something. Kupunas, you're saying, oh, the Kupunas, what do they know? 
But let me tell you something. We know a lot. And we didn't have to go be educated in the University of Hawaii or any of the Western educational system. We didn't have to. But some of us went there. But we knew what was happening. That they were conditioning us to think like them. And that's why we become colonized Hawaiians. Okay? So, we go back into a community and do we take what we've learned into a community and say, this is how you do it? Our people in the community says, who do you think you are? This is not how we function in the community. They don't understand that kind of methodology. All they know is, this is the land, this is what Kupuna taught us, and this is how we malama forever. So now, why, what's happening is, the Poe Haole came, changed the laws so that they can eat all of our land. Okay, and they're doing it. We see it in our community right now. Three generations of Haoles coming in. Okay? Before it was only one generation, now it's three. Grandparents, parents, and grandchildren. So they come in, they change the law, the laws are changed. They build houses next to people who have been there for generations on the land. What our people don't understand is, when they build a brand new house, the value of the land and the houses of our kupuna went up. But the income of our kupuna is the same. So guess what? They have property tax they cannot afford because they live on fixed income. So guess what happened? They lose their house. And so that's how these guys come and take our land. Then they bring development. So all of these things are happening. In the meantime, we have self-appointed people that say, we speak for the people. We are going to talk about how we're going to govern our people. Well, who are you people? We never heard of you. you. Your people never elect you. They never even seen your face in the town. They never even see your face in the Ahukua. You appear and all of a sudden go, who that? Or some person who said, they speak for the nation. <laughs> What nation? We're in the Hawaiian kingdom. You know why? Our land is in the kingdom. But where you come from? You know more land. You know more nothing. All you get is the vala'au. That's all you do. You get vala'au, vala'au. But when you talk about the land, you never dig the hole for the taro. You never dig the hole for the co coconut. You never dig the hole for the ulu. You know? You never do any of that. And yet, you come and you guys follow out about the aina and the governance. The governance is in the land. That's where it's at. Ei hoano luna e piano lalo e huyana namoku. This is a long time the chance that one day the rulers will fall and the people will raise the nation again. That is the moolelo from Kupuna. And that look all little stays and lives on forever, as long as the people don't come together. You guys say, oh, we work for years. We've gone to United Nations. But did you ever come to your people? Hell no. You never came to the people. You know why? They don't know your name. Our Ali's, they travel island to island to island. And they were in connection with the people. That's the true leadership of Mo'i. You guys are not OEs, you guys are not even Kahunas, you guys are not even any of these things. You're not even part of the Kalai Aina. Where you come from? What the name of the wind in your Ahupua? What the name of the Papa of the ocean your people come from? When does the migration of your fish come to you? What's the name of the Ahu? What's the name of the Kuula? Aole Manao! You guys know nothing! That is traditional Kupuna knowledge that you guys know nothing about. And you sit here and dare to talk to us about our nation. Our nation is in us. The one who malama the aina. Our aina and our sovereignty is in the land. And you guys come and spew this medicine. How dare you? And this national. Who is the national? Pili Koko Hawaiian? Or everybody of every race. Everybody of every race. That's your choice. Let the people decide. It's not you. You're just one person. It is the people's choice to decide. Nobody else. And I'm going to tell you now. 
We have to gather together. We gotta unite our people. This is the time to reinstate how Kamehameha conquered our islands from 1795, 2015 is the year to do it. We have to march from Kau all the way to Kohala. From Kohala, go across to Maui. From Maui, go across to Molokai. From Molokai, come to Oahu. And we take possession of the opening of the session next year. That's how we're going to unite our people. Because as we walk, we educate them. Not only Hawaiians, but we educate everybody that lives in Hawaii. Uh, Ole. 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 Has the government ever used God in their pursuit? If they have, I, I, I've been unaware of that. But our approach should be just as simple as we can envision the Lord walking beside us. No more kama. Okay. No more necktie walking with us. And all we are doing is please do your duty. We only ask you to do your duty. No more, no less. If you think we're asking too much, please tell us why you think we're asking too much. Mahalo. By the way, for those that feel that they're colonized, they're colonized. I've never felt that I've been colonized. So it's to wean yourself by understanding the word. If you're going to practice being them, you are them. Yeah, I'm not them. Anthony, may I say something? Okay. Um, I don't disagree with what you said. Um, and I agree that if we wish to take leadership positions, and I have taken what I believe is a leadership position. I owe it to come to the community so that you get to know who I am. So yes, I'm a Kai Ama. Okay, my, my, that's my uncle. Yeah, so that is my uncle. My father is uh, Everett Kai Ama from uh, Moku Okiabu. Um I can tell you, although I didn't work in the Lo'i, I worked on the land. So I did grow up, but but I don't was, disagree with you. I think it is important. I think I owe it. That, that is something I've been remiss. We need to talk to more of our people so you get to know me, so that you understand who I am and maybe agree or disagree. With me. Yes, or maybe tell me that I don't belong here. So I do owe that to you. But if I may say, if I may say respectfully, that Kawikeoli enlisted the help of foreigners to help us start our constitution and to start our government. Kamehameha did that as well. So, so the, the education part of it, our, our Hawaiian Kingdom Constitution and our government was based on foreign knowledge as well. But it was foreign knowledge that we integrated into our Hawaiian community. So we made sure that that foreign knowledge fit with who we were. But, but I just... But are. Are, okay. I, 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 I stand corrected. I stand corrected. But, but you understand that foreign knowledge is part of who we are and having an idea about foreign knowledge is who we are. So as we move forward... Excuse me, come on. Foreign knowledge didn't come from America, it came from other countries. Yeah, international. Uh, I disagree. Some of it came from America as well. We actually used the Constitution of Massachusetts to develop our Constitution. So, Auntie, it does come from all, all places, including America. So we did, we did, we did utilize information from abroad including information from America but I, I'm no it wasn't it wasn't when we when we developed our constitution and we we actually took from the U, uh, Ma, uh, Ma, the Constitution of Massachusetts I, I'm just saying that we use foreign knowledge including knowledge from America 
Okay. So what point so, are you trying to get? Well, the point I'm trying to get to is that what we're doing today is using that foreign knowledge, some of that foreign knowledge, to make sure that the rest of the world understand who we are and what our claim is. So, so most important is our people first. Yeah. And we're foreigners last. Okay. Uh, you may be correct about that. I may not be able to disagree, but I think at the same time, from my perspective, I think we need to let the foreign community know what's going on. So maybe it is a coordinated effort as opposed to a singular effort. But it is that it is that knowledge that is being widespread in the international community that I believe will have an effect and will start part of this ground shifting that's happening. So yes, I agree it's here, but I, I, I would have to say that is also outside. And, and when I tell you what I'm doing in the court, part of that is to make that record anti, as you say, and then to use that evidence of that record to pursue it in the international community. And that's why we file it with the, I filed it with the International Criminal Court, bringing claims of un, unfair trial and, and in violation of international law and war crimes against the judges, war crimes against the banks, war crimes against the bank's attorneys. We are pursuing that as well because the evidence is all there. So sometimes part of that sacrifice Well, I, I'm trying to address your question. So some of it is not, you know, some of it is is something that I think that is necessary. And yes, my manao on that, and maybe you don't agree with me on that, but I think that manao, that process we've been doing has had an effect, has had a, a good impact on it. So um, I, I will have to take what you said to heart. I agree with you. And in some way, you know, that's part of our, all our kuleana as well. So. I'm a good I'm a good good I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a he did that. He explained. He explained our name. Yeah. He did that because of our ID. He uncovered that. That that according to heaven, according to the other book, our company and village. Okay, for those of you who want to know what <coughs> the question was, is that uh, he said that this book that was uh, written by Aaron Ardais, Hawaii the Big State, uh, talks about the all cap names and stuff like that. So uh, you'd have to go look at it and, and see what, what he's talking about. Right? About what, that what you the Yeah. <coughs> it's not something that we can really get in right now. Um, uh, are there any other questions? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, my my yeah. <coughs> what What is the Hawaiian national? <coughs> Thanks, <Frank>. uh, uh, <coughs> a Hawaiian national, <coughs> if I may, a Hawaiian national is actually all citizens, <coughs> including Kanaka and non-Kanaka, <coughs> Who, hold, who owed an allegiance to the Hawaiian Kingdom. That's Hawaiian National. The allegiance is what's important. The allegiance is what's important, not the koko. Now we understand. No, 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 I think the koko should be more important than allegiance. Okay, but. but... But I'm just telling you that at the time of our overthrow, at the time of the overthrow, the Hawaiian National included more than just Kanaka. Right, and 
and they had, they had life interest on the land. So when they die, the land goes back to the people. Okay, now see, we're talking something different. We're talking about an interest in the land. I was thinking about in terms of civil and political rights. And I'm so talking Hawaiian, about the, the land that's being used that you guys are trying to represent and not, not keep the land with the uh, popo. Okay, so your question is a non What is a Hawaiian <coughs> national in your, in your, because you guys read a resolution. Uh, I didn't read it, that's not my okay, resolution. You read a resolution. Who is the makers of the resolution? Um, several of us who wanted to get this resolution uh, passed. How many it, what know about it, what this it, resolution? Okay, what it was, okay, it wasn't adopted yet. It doesn't but, matter, that means okay, it was but what it was, it was a way to point out the fact that the Kanai Oluvalu, the uh, Act 195, was deficient in identifying who the people of Hawaii was. That a whole group was left out, and that group is actually under persecution by the state of Hawaii, and that's Hawaiian nationals. So that is that was the main purpose of it. If they were going to recognize that there's uh, native Hawaiians, then they need to recognize there's Hawaiian nationals also. Okay, so now you want to bring in non coco another 700,000 people into the city. Is that correct? No, that's not what we're saying. We're still under uh, occupation, so those laws apply. But this is a resolution here. They, they no, the resolution doesn't... Uh, I cannot speak to the resolution, but as Connie says, under the laws of occupation, it maintains the status quo at the time of the illegal overthrow. And what that status quo was, was 85 to 86 percent of the population were Kanaka. So, it would have to be that same percentage okay so that means it wouldn't be 700,000 non Kanaka unless we had to ha happen to have a couple million Hawaiian and that's not the case so the percentage is what's important under laws of occupation that you maintain which is the status quo so under the Hawaiian Kingdom law 85 percent of the voting population would be Kanaka so Kanaka controls the government, the Kanaka controls the politics. <coughs> so and so even so that's that's how I. But if you're making a resolution. To well, again, I have to pass it back. I'm not. Yeah. I'm, that's not my resolution. The resolution doesn't give the state any power. It, it binds the state from keep from persecuting us. That's all it does. It just tells them we're here and you cannot deny it. That's all the resolution does. It doesn't. They they don't provide any kind of of. Uh, power to us or anything like that. All that resolution says is that Hawaiian nationals are here and that we should not be unjustly uh, prosecuted because of our nationality. Or non-coco? Non yeah. Non-coco or coco. Filippo Souza was thrown in jail. Uh, he's a Hawaiian national. He was thrown in jail for a year because, uh, anyway, so I won't get into the details of the cases, but he's non-coco. But he was still prosecuted as a Hawaiian national. And then later, his case was overturned after he had already served his time. And the, the court agreed that he was, he was unjustly... Uh, but this is, this is creating another class of people in the state of Hawaii. Now it's a not, uh, Hawaiian national. No, we're, we're saying where there's a, there's a class of people not in the state of Hawaii, in, in the Hawaiian kingdom. That the, the class of people in the Hawaiian Kingdom are Hawaiian nationals. We're not saying we're part of the Hawaiian state of Hawaii. Can I ask something that, uh, to clarify? Under the laws of